Welcome to the director's commentary of Lily. On the whole, I have followed conventions um, very well in my teaser trailer. But just to start off, um, I've challenged one. Um, rather than having a conventional establishing shot, I um, incorporated it in within the over shoulder shot we see at the beginning. Um, I think I've done, well, I've done this because I think it's it's effective as it it establishes where this film will be set, which is in the house, which we see in the background, and we see the antagonist, but we only see the back of her, and this creates Enigma codes. It gets the what it's on the edge of the seat right from the beginning, and we also see the protagonist as well. So we have three things introduced that are very important within the film right at the beginning. Um, also, I have a. Um, boom sounds where the antagonist appears um, this is very conventional, um, I found this within my questionnaire and in my existing examples um, the, kind of the effect of this is that it makes the viewer jump as it like further emphasises the um, antagonist appearing and um, without the sound there it's, it might not be as easily noticeable um, in some cases and but when obviously when it may be noticeable but the boom further emphasises it and makes the viewer jump which is important within a horror film um, I've used a lot of quick cuts. Um, fast paced action is very conventional within a horror film. Um, it makes it more exciting, it makes it more thrilling to watch, um, keeps the viewer on the edge of their seats. Um, I found I found this um, was a convention um, when looking at existing examples that, like the likes of The Grudge, um, Horsing in Connecticut, Dragon to Hell, they all have very quick cuts um, within them, within the action, um, which kept the viewer on the edge of the seat. Um, I also you follow the convention of isolated characters. Um, the protagonist is very isolated on her own, in the house on her own, and the only other thing in there is the antagonist, and this um, helps the um, audience sympathise with her, and it makes it more scary as um, she has no one to help her, and so she's very much on her own. Um, also, uh, the flashing image of the antagonist, um, I'll, I'll challenge conventions of this because this isn't actually very conventional at all, it's quite an original idea. Um, throughout the trailer uh, the antagonist's face flashes up, um, starts off quite small flashes and then towards the end the flashes get um, bigger and it's more you can see who it is and you can see it's the antagonist and this kind of creates confusion and enigma codes throughout the um, trailer is it without them it's it's you just watching the trailer with it with them um, the audience is questioning what's going on, what was that, what was that but they're trying to concentrate on the action as well, so it keeps them right on the edge of their seats, which is what I'm trying to create um, with, it, with this trailer. The more on the, on the edge of the seats they are, the more excited they are with watching it. Um, and also then the website appears right at the end, which is common in many teaser trailers, as there isn't much information given away in the, in the actual trailer, so the website is there right at the end, so the audience can go on and research further. I follow conventions very well in my poster as well. I haven't challenged um, I don't think any. I think I've stuck to the conventions and it's 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 worked well and it's created a very effective poster I think. Um, the main image is of the antagonist which is apparent in very many uh, horror film po posters because at the end of the day they're the main feature of the film. They're what, they're what makes it scary and by having that as the main image it kind of gives the audience a taste of what's you know what the antagonist is. It's only half her face as well so it's, it's like teasing the audience um, so I think that works well and it's like I say it's a convention um, the title is in red which I, I found was one of the most strongest the strongest conventions for horror posters um, as all the almost all the ones I looked at um, uh, had the title in red and this is because red connotes danger it connotes fear it connotes blood um, all the things kind of associated with horror kind of go with the color red and so that's why I've got it um, throughout my poster um, with the text a lot of the text being in red. Um, the tagline, she will not forget, uh, this is an enigma code in itself. Um, it makes the audience think, why, what, what, what won't she forget, what, what's happened? And so um, that's another reason for the audience to go watch the film. Um, like I say, all, all posters have a, um, well, a majority of posters have a tagline, so it's a very conventional thing to have. And so, like I say, I've stuck to that. I've also got a critic quote just underneath the tagline. It says horrifying um, by Ultimate Film. It's just a one word quote which is again you'd see it on a lot of posters and it kind of um, reassures the audience that it's a good film so they're more likely to go watch it. The building block at the bottom of the poster um, in my opinion is very professional. It looks very realistic and most posters have them. Um, it's, a, it's a strong convention so I chose to stick with it. 
and we've also got some of the production companies logos within that as well um, and then also I have uh, Coming Soon which is a convention as um, and that's also in red which continues the theme of red in the poster um, most posters will either have Coming Soon or the actual date of the release um, so again I've stuck to the convention there and then just alongside it is the website um, lilywillnotforget.com so the um, audience can go on and research further I've also got the actresses names at the top of the poster um, this is to help to sell the film because although they're obviously not well known because they're just the people that are featured in my film uh, and in a reality um, if bigger um, actors, act actresses were used which they would be um, it would help sell the film as the people will see the actresses names and go oh I like that particular actress and I'm going to go see that film I'm not worried what the film's about and so straight away it's kind of got a hook on the audience um, so yeah like I say it's just it's another way to sell the film so as a whole I think I've followed conventions very well in the post and I think it's turned out very well. I followed conventions very well in the production of my film magazine cover. Um, every aspect of it is very conventional. Um, from the masthead, which is through the middle in a big bold text, nothing too fancy, just a nice simple text, easy to read. Um, I've got a tagline, I've got a website, although covered up, by the main image which is another convention the image is covering the title and this is a convention that features in many of their magazines which brings the picture out makes it stand out better um, I have plenty of cover lines I have cover lines on both sides of the page um, with bold writing for the for the for the hook of the cover line and then smaller writing um, for more detail um, I have a bigger um, text for the main cover line um, as to um, pull the emphasis to that as well as the picture um, it's in a different colour as well and a metallic -y colour which was, I found very conventional whilst looking at my existing examples um, I also included a little banner along the bottom that featured um, a few images uh, of other films um, in this case it was to do with uh, the top DVD releases of the month um, this is very conventional as there was not just one image um, on my existing examples there was uh, you know the main image and then three maybe four others um, and so I felt that I definitely needed to include some more images and I've done that well I think um, one convention that I actually challenged was that the main image tends to be in the centre of the page with the a main cover line um, just um, over the top of it. Um, I actually had my main image um, to the right of the page and I had my main cover line just to the left it, still covering up a part of the image and having cover lines surrounding the, the outside of the image. Um, I'd done this because I felt um, with my original um, try at the magazine cover the picture was bang in the middle, um, it was a shot straight forward and I didn't feel this was very effective and so I challenged this and changed it to what I have now and I felt this helped as a whole and the layout looks much much better than my first try.